At this point, we already know a couple things about centripetal acceleration. It is the acceleration of an object which is moving in a circular path at a constant speed. And two, the direction of centripetal acceleration is always towards the center of that circular path. At this point, we're going to learn how to calculate the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration. How fast is it accelerating? Before we begin, let's try and predict what factors might be involved here. If you're going to turn a corner in a parking lot, how could you create a greater centripetal acceleration? Since forces cause acceleration, we know that we would have a greater centripetal acceleration if the passengers in the back seat were shoved against each other and the door, or we heard the tires squeal, or the car tilted. So to make these forces bigger, what would you do? How about your speed when you take the corner? You can probably envision the faster you take that corner, the bigger the force or acceleration. But what else? Well, which corner would you rather take going 50 kilometers per hour? Assuming that you don't want to go into the ditch, you'll probably pick corner number two. The bigger the radius of curvature, the less the force or acceleration. So, that being said, one formula for calculating centripetal acceleration is AC equals V squared over R. Note that the V, or velocity, is on top. So, as expected, the faster we go, the greater the centripetal acceleration. In fact, because the velocity is squared in this equation, the velocity is even more important. If you double the velocity, your acceleration is increased by four times. Also, we can note that the r for radius of curvature is on the bottom. So, as expected, the bigger the curve, the less the acceleration. And note, we often label centripetal acceleration as an a with a little c after it. It's still just acceleration, but we include the C to remind ourselves that this acceleration is due to a change in direction rather than speed. So, centripetal acceleration is fairly easy to calculate this way. But, for this formula, you needed to know the object's linear speed and the radius of its circular path. What if, instead of knowing the linear speed of the object, you know more about the rotational speed. For example, what if you're standing beside the same track and you determine that the car takes 50 seconds to round the track? You can also use that information to determine the centripetal acceleration. In this case, the formula that would be easier to use would be AC equals 4 pi squared R over capital T squared. The capital T is the period, that is, the time it takes the car to complete one rotation. So, that would be 50 seconds in this case. The equation is a little more complicated than the other to look at, but still pretty manageable. Which one you use simply depends on what information you've been given about the object's motion. If you're looking for a nice mathematical challenge, you can derive the first equation using your vector diagrams and a little trig. Then the second equation can be derived from the first one, simply using the fact that the circumference of the circle is 2 pi r.